Hello there my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make this cute wire work chain so you can use this for lots of different things like bracelets and necklaces but I also think it would work really well for a glasses chain and of course it's completely customizable with the colors that you choose so if you want to learn how to make your own then keep watching so these are the materials that we're going to need first of all the wire that I'm using here is a 0.8 mil regular round copper wire and as for the beads, I'm using these 4mm rounds here, and I'm just using two different colours of agate gemstone beads, but of course you can choose your beads and colours however you want to. And like always, you'll find the materials and helpful links in the description box down below, otherwise let's get our wire and beads ready, and let's get started! Now before we start making the chain, what I personally like to do is cut several lengths of my wire ready, so I can just grab them as I need them, and these lengths are each about 10cm long. So I then grab a length of wire and we're going to use one length per link and then in this case here I'm going to be working with my six step bell making pliers. You can also use round nose pliers, I just like knowing what size loop I'm going to get that I'm working with on the pliers here. Now I'm going to place my pliers roughly about the middle of the wire and I'm working with my second smallest step. Then I'm going to take one bead and get that on the wire and the bead is basically sitting in the middle and the pliers right next to it obviously just as close to the middle as you can get so my pliers are sitting right next to the bead then I'm going to take this end of the wire where my pliers are and I'm going to start bringing the end around the pliers towards the other side you can kind of overlap it a little bit, like that. And then I like to flip it around and grab hold of the wire and the bead here. And then I need to place my pliers on the other side of the bead, making sure the bead stays in that same place. So we can still fit the pliers on the other side of the bead there. And then I need to do the same thing, but with the other end. So, I'm grabbing the other end of the wire and bringing that around in the same direction. It's further around, the pliers there. Make sure then the bead is pushed up right against the pliers because then as I'm bringing this wire further around, I'm going to make it go over the other wire, but basically around the bead. So I'm using the bead as a bit of a guide and I'm also using then this length of wire to kind of cage the bead in place and then bring it a little bit further around so it's kind of hugging around that side of the bead. Now the other one is still a bit more open so I'm just going to go back to the other side, place my pliers back in and then just bring this length around in the same way so again I'm bringing it further. Make sure the bead is pushed all the way up there and then bringing this wire over the other side and then just hugging nicely around the bead like that and you can then see it's almost like the wires are kind of wanting to intertwine with each other but we have the bead in the middle and it creates this nice shape and then I've used my pliers here to get these as you could say loops on the ends which is where I'm then going to also use them to connect the links together then to secure this in place and finish off the ends, I want to make sure that first of all I'm on this side where the wires are lapping over, so the ends are coming over the other wires. Then I'm going to just grab one end at a time, hold on to everything in the middle here so nothing goes out of shape, and then just bring it around basically towards the back. So you can see from the side there, it's going to be wrapping around and kind of looping back towards itself. I'm just going to flip around, do the same with the other end, bring it around the back and just have it come back down behind itself. Then I'm grabbing my flush cutters and on the back now here we basically just want to cut off the excess but enough, leave enough of a tail on the wire that's looping around so it's going to hook around the wire that is already looping around there and catch which is what's going to keep it in place. So you can see a little end there. I'm just going to cut the other end off as well. 
but again making sure I'm leaving a few millimeters or so of the wire so again that's kind of just sticking out a little bit then I grab my tweezers and pliers and we just want to basically push this very end of the wire further in so I have it hook even more around and that tightens it more in place so push that in and you can see that and it also gets rid of the end so nothing is sticking out catching or scratching on anything of course flip it around and do the same with the other end push it in nicely so basically the end of the wire kind of loops around the other wire but almost to the point where it meets up with itself and the end kind of goes against the side of itself and that is basically one link done what I'm then left with from that length of wire that I just used for one link are these two short ends. Now, of course, you can just get rid of them, but you can also use them to make a few jump rings. So obviously, I'm connecting mine in a certain way. You can connect yours however you want to. But just to show you, you would just grab, you can use round pliers, but that's another thing I like using these pliers for, is if I need to make jump rings, because I can choose the step, obviously, determining what size I want. And I know, because that step has the same size all the way down, I can just bring my wire around and around, make a coil basically. Obviously, however much wire you've got. Just squeeze that end, finished. And then I have, a, in this case, quite a tiny little coil, but I can get a couple of jump rings out of that. And then to make the jump rings, I'm just going to get my flush cutters. Now, I do recommend that you use flush cutters for this because we need, ideally, the ends of the wires that we cut to be nice and flat. I'm just going to start on one end. First of all, cut the end flat. Get rid of that little bit. Now, what I then do is flip the flush cutters so the flat side is going to be against where the other end is going to be. And cut just one step up, you could say put as much in the same place as the cut below. And there I now have a jump ring that's nice and ready to use. And then in this case here, how I've chosen to connect my links together, I'm just gonna use these jump rings that I've made with the same wire as the links themselves and connect them together. So I'm just using, like I said, the loops there on the ends, put my jump ring through one and then I've already got a few prepared here, so a bit of a length. And you want to make sure, because I have the front towards me, so I need to put them kind of back to back at the end of the other link. Close up the jump ring. And you can leave it like that. What I'm kind of liking for this chain here is actually doing a double jump ring. So just open up another one and then again get to the same place and then just loop through the exact same two loops there where we already have a jump ring. Just add another one. Close that up. And then I've linked another link onto my length of chain and it just gives a nice little effect and obviously it's also extra secure as well if you're using this technique of attaching them. So that's how you make this cute little chain with a pretty simple and easy technique and you can really customize it depending how you mix your colors. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial now if you like making your own chain I have loads more tutorials for different designs on my channel so feel free to check that out otherwise thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you in the next one.